that is this product. When I'm making a lot of soup, it's you know more economical than it is to use the boxes. I see Deb has boxes. Um, so I do a lot of stuff with all my cooking to try to make it easier and faster. So you'll notice I'm using the chopped garlic from Costco. <laughs> you know, some days when I'm really feeling it, I will chop it myself, but not today. I'm also using squeezed ginger. I actually prefer the one from the Indian store, but I ran out. And so canned chickpeas, okay? I also have um, butternut squash. You can get this at Giant, at Costco, at Trader Joe's. Squash is a pain to de-vein and everything. Yeah. So I really like this. However, I'm a little short, so I had some kombucha squash, so I'm gonna throw that in too. I did have so many sweet potatoes for Thanksgiving, I decided to do it, so I have them peeled, but not chopped. I'll chop them while we're cooking. You know, you can buy those at Trader Joe's done too. So if you want a super quick weeknight meal, buy it all chopped. You've got your garlic, your ginger. It literally takes about 15 minutes to throw this soup together with the box. Uh, it's a great, it's one of my favorite recipes. We make it a lot in the winter. My kids love it. So let's start by doing the onions. So you're going to put your olive oil in your pan. There's the recipe if you want to follow it. I just eyeball it. And throw your chopped onions in. I've never, uh, my kids have cooked with their cousins on Zoom, but I have not. So it's actually really fun to do this with everybody. I think it's great. It's like I've got Katie in the kitchen and Denise and Salma. Oh, this is so much fun. And we've got all kinds of new friends here today. So I love this too. I might have been having a glass of wine if I wasn't leading the cooking, but you know. <laughs> Next week. Next, Next week, week, Salma will be leading us and you'll be drinking some wine. So this is one of my favorite fall and winter soups because it's got that earthy, rooty, vegetable-y chicken broth base, but it also has the grated lime and the cilantro, which to me lightens it, kind of gives it more of a Caribbean summery feel. So to me, it's sort of a nice balance. It's from the New Covent Garden Soup Company, which is a British soup company. And I'm so jealous because in Britain, they sell these box, like in those four cup boxes in the supermarket, um, and it's fresh. So like it only lasts a week, but I stayed with my cousins there. And every night we had soup as a poured right out of the carton. And it was so delicious. And I looked for it here and they don't sell it, but I bought their cookbook. I have not made a soup out of their cookbooks that I don't love. So. If you're interested, they have four or five cookbooks. You can get them on Amazon. They're really excellent. Hi, Dominique. Hey, nice to see you. I missed uh, being in your kitchen. <laughs> you, put, uh, you put olive oil and onions so far? Uh, yes, I'm just putting my onions in because mine was warming up. So we're gonna cook the onions for 10 minutes with the garlic. So. I have put my onions in and I am stirring them with my favorite spoon. A friend got this for me uh, at an antique store and I've been cooking with it for years. It's my cast iron, which I absolutely love. Whoops. I, can you guys see me? Yes. Hold on, I did something. I can't see you. Here you are. Um, so, I've just got my onions and my cast iron here. I've got my broth ready. And I am gonna put my garlic in. Garlic cloves, I'm just gonna wing it. I'll probably put a little extra of my prepared garlic. Dominique? Yeah? Megan is asking if anyone has a sense of how many sweet potatoes is three pounds, but I'm getting the sense by the way you're cooking, it just doesn't even matter. It doesn't really matter. I will show you this. Uh, I don't know if you can see the size. 
it's full of whole potatoes. That's about three and a half pounds because I was a little short on my butternut squash, so I decided to put more sweet potatoes. Again, yep. it's super forgiving. If you chop your stuff smaller, it will cook faster. And at the end, you're gonna decide if you're gonna puree it or do it a little bit chunky. What are some of your all's favorite soups? Well, this isn't exactly my recipe, but butternut squash uh, or sweet potatoes are uh, some of my favorites. And I, to answer one input on question, my son had the potatoes weighed that we used, and it was four of the ones that he picked out, okay. if that's helpful. It almost fills up a, well, it's about this, yeah. well, this but uh, it's about an inch down from the top. Once you have it chopped, right? Yeah, they're chopped pretty big. You know, I, I wasn't sure how small they're. It doesn't matter because you can leave it chunky or you can puree it. The smaller ones will um, cook faster. I did learn you can look up how many pounds is, how many cups are three pounds of potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> that was, I didn't know I could do that. That was interesting. Yeah, I know, Google, isn't it amazing? Oh, here's, here's the baby that I'm cooking for here. Oh, that is a perfect baby. He's perfect. Oh. Although they haven't decided on his name. It's been six weeks. It's, they can't decide if they're going to call him his first or his second, so they're still calling him Lentil, which was what they called him from when he was about the size of a lentil. <laughs> now he's going to be called Sweet Potato. Exactly, right? Wait, whose baby is that, Dominique? You know, um, you know Anjali, Julia's cousin? She's come to various projects. Her baby brother. Oh. So my uncle Danny, who's more like a brother, he's a young uncle, uh, and his wife just had a baby. Lovely. So this is for about 10 minutes. I'm going to keep working on chopping my sweet potatoes since I was a little behind on that. I kind of rough peel them. I'm not like crazy. Like I just, you know, most of it just came off. Hey, it's Peg. I had a quick question. Does the chickpeas go in at the same time as the sweet potatoes? later I think hold on let me look at the recipe um, okay yeah no you simmer all this till they're soft and then you'll add this the, oh I missed I'm sorry I missed putting that on the um, recipe Oops, sorry but you do put them in after this has been simmering and they're kind of soft because the sweet potatoes are cooked we just want them to some of the flavor of the stock. Okay, so it's um, after you do the 10 to 20 minutes then. Exactly, sorry. Okay, thank you. What's everybody doing? How are your onions? Soft, not necessarily browned, you know, but I, I think browning tastes good, so I wouldn't worry if they are brown. So what are people's favorite soups? Chili. A kind sherry? Chili. You know, like uh, bean chili or just like that in the oh, middle of chili. that nice tomato -y. Wonderful. Well, you know, the um, shelters that are um, excited to receive soup from us, we're hoping that somebody would lead us a chili and a sloppy joe session. So, Sherry, if you would consider a meat chili, that would be fantastic. I know not meat isn't for everybody, but it is for the people at those shelters. Okay. All right. Thank you.
And the Up County uh, Hub, is that the one that's, I'm new to the area, is that the one that's in Germantown? Or yes, in yes. That's at the Black Rock Center for the Arts. Okay. I like uh, chicken tortilla soup. That's one of my favorites. Oh, that one, you make a great one. Oh, thank you. I may have to make it now with us, huh? <laughs> I, um, I make all the vegetables you have, um, carrots, uh, celery, beans, uh, um, what else do I put in? And then, and then some green beans and a, white beans with chicken stock. Um, if I have chicken, like a rotisserie chicken or, or a chicken, baked chicken leftover, I'll throw that in. Even rice or, um, yeah, to make it a meal. It's, it's so good. Just cooked with chicken stock. You just cook it, cook it, cook it. First, you know, do the same thing with the onions and garlic like we're doing now, and then just comes out delicious. Is that what we're making with you next weekend, Salma? No, no, no. we're not. We're making something that uh, Sanya, my daughter, has, uh, who is the chef of the family, she has uh, selected, and it's her favorite soup. So. Ah, beautiful. We can't wait. Yes. So Deb, were you saying uh, take some sloppy joes and chili to the shoppers? Is that what I heard you say? Say it again, Sherry. What? What did you say about chili and shelters? Oh, the shelters, the two shelters that are already on our um, list of people who want to receive food specifically said if we would cook some chili or some sloppy joes, they would be very grateful. So many of our meals will be vegetarian or vegan like this one. If you're using vegetable broth, please do mark your container um, with the date, with your name, um, with the type of soup it is and vegan. If you're using a chicken broth, then you'll just have the name of the soup and that will be fine. People will get to know that if it's vegan or vegetarian, we'll let them know. If it's got pork, we'll let them know. If it's got dairy, we'll let them know. You know, any of the things that people, nuts, anything that people are traditionally allergic to, we'll mark, okay? Thank you. So oh guys, I'm starting to zest my lime because in a minute we're, or two, we're gonna start putting our spices, our honey and our lime in with the, um, with the onion. Now, because I had to prepare my stock rather than using it out of a box, I'm frying this in a pan. Normally, if I was using the boxes, I would fry it right in the pot and then add the stock. So just one pot is always good, but in this case, I'm making more than I normally would. So if you haven't already zested your lime, I'm gonna suggest you do that because that's the next step and we still have a little time to- um, Dominique, lemon is okay? Sorry? Is lemon, is lemon okay? I think it would be good. I've never tried it, but I bet it'll be good. I think soup is very forgiving. So I have realized I am out of coriander. So would you double up the cumin? I wouldn't double up the cumin. I would, I would Google coriander substitute. <laughs> And see if there are any good ideas. I asked Alexa on what a substitute would be and they said cumin. Oh okay I don't know if I would double it up. I would taste it for I think it'll be too much. Cumin is much heavier. Coriander is sort of um, much more um, it's more summery. It's more like the lime. It's and I always think of cumin as being very meaty. What about adding cardamom if you don't have one of those spices? I like cardamom and see what you think, but cardamom is a very strong flavor. Anybody else have any thoughts? I see nodding. Well, I was nodding, but not because I can cook, but I was thinking that those um, cardamom, the black cardamom nuts that you, that you um, grind yourself, just a it's little bit. Uh-oh, Isabella is saying, no way. Go ahead, Isabella, you talk. <laughs> What you say is cardamom nut is not a cardamom. You are probably confused with clove. You grate cloves. Cardamom comes with pods and seeds. 
very small and it's a very specific flavor. I meant, I meant pods and seeds, but you grind ah, it, right? right? The black right. cardamom. And I, I, I do it on this thing. Yeah. No, it's very, very small. You cannot do that. I'll show you. Okay. Yeah, here. I don't know how to hold it up to the screen, but they're... Yeah, those are little pods, and I usually drop them in the hole and fish them out. The cardamom? Yeah, or, or you could squeeze them and get the seeds out. Oh, okay. Can I just That's say... Yeah, no. Can I just say that no one should ever listen to me? I'm talking about <laughs> nutmeg. Yes, that's what I said. Nutmeg. Never listen to me, ever. But, you know, nutmeg does have a little bit, I wouldn't put a lot of nutmeg, but it has a little bit of that lifting flavor that, that coriander does. I think that's closer, I, you know. By the way, if nobody has, if somebody doesn't have a microplane for grating nutmeg, for grating limes, it's a game changer. That's one for Christmas. Yes. Yeah. Right. And so um, now we're going to put in the ginger, the chili. I'm not using chili, but it's really good with it. Lime zest and honey. Okay. Um, so Dominique, how much lime zest? I, I can't see the recipe while I'm on Zoom with you. So. Zest of three limes. Yep. Or lemons. It comes out to a lot, but I guess... It's actually, it's a lot of soup. Yes, it, it, that's correct. All right. So ginger, um, the ginger, the lime zest, and what else are we adding? Cumin and coriander. So it's okay. a big tablespoon of each of the spices. How many? Right in the, right in the onions. One heaping tablespoon. I'm behind. Of, of, um, Dominique, sorry, of coriander and cumin. cumin. Those are the only two powdered spices we use. And then some runny honey. So, I mean, it's just because it's easier. I don't know what runny honey is. They're British, you know. <laughs> okay. So stir it because what we're doing is we're releasing the flavor of the spices by frying it, which, you know, it's a very, like this is used in Indian, uh, Pakistani, other Middle Eastern cooking. It's, it's very, um, it's a great way to get the flavor to kind of be more complex than just throwing it. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Hi, I'm Kelly. Hi, nice to meet you all. Um, I'm in the weeds here because I didn't get everything organized in time, but um, It'll be fine. did you say to put the chili in too if you're using a chili? Yes. No? Okay. Yes. And how much honey? Uh, how much honey? One tablespoon plus a teaspoon. So four okay. teaspoons or just, you know, be liberal with your tablespoon. Okay. Thank you. And again, this is a super forgiving recipe, so eyeballing is fine. It's going to be really good. No matter what. I think soup is always forgiving. I agree. We always you. add a little bit of this and a little bit of that. Yep. The honey is really important because you know I I don't know if you guys have have followed Samin Nasrat at all. Um, she's a Palestinian cook. She has a book called Salt Acid. Uh, sweet, bittersweet. Something yeah. like that, yeah. And, and the sweet, you know, you've got the lime, which you're going to put the lime juice into, you know, which is, um, you know, acidic. And then you've got the sweet, and all of those are really important as part of flavor. That's why Thai food's so good. If you cook Thai food, there's always tamarind pulp, some kind of sh palm sugar, something in there that's sweet. A uh, book changed my cooking life. For sure. Yeah, I haven't gotten into it, but it's uh, I've watched her show. She has a sh four series show on Netflix, and she's just delightful. Um, so I am going to go ahead and put this in my stock now, and then um, 
Then we're gonna add in our sweet potato and butternut squash. And because I put it in the pan, I don't wanna lose any of those flavors. So I'm gonna take just, you know, a cup of liquid and deglaze the pan and throw it in there because it would just be a shame to waste them. I only prepped stuff because I was cooking with you and we're trying to keep it to a reasonable size. I never prep. I just do this as I go along and I'm, you know, it's, it's a really flexible soup. Now that people have been cooking with Dominique, they'll come prepped next time because she's a fast chef. Uh, I know. Wait, if you're using chopped garlic, like how how much am I using? Like the, the jar? Uh, I put in like it's eight cloves, something like two tablespoons for this much. If you're doing the full recipe, I'd put it in like two tablespoons. This really, is there such a thing as too much garlic? No. Not very easy. I always had like garlic breath. What's the problem with garlic breath? <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Megan. Good to meet you in, in picture. Good to see oh, you. I know. You too. I was actually impressed with myself that I uh, I made the chicken stock with the chicken bones in the Instapot. Oh, oh, right. Oh, Megan, we are looking for one chef to lead us in an Instant Pot uh, soup or chili or um, uh, <laughs> sloppy joe. That could be you. I, I don't know that I'd ever use an Instapot for a chili, like... Oh, well, I'm telling you, with the soup, it's great. I'm sure Dominique's got some recipes for chili or... Uh... Yeah, you know, chili's so easy to do on the stove. Oh. To me, it's not a time saver. Okay. What I think it's a time saver for is dried beans. Yeah. Used to get them falling apart. Yeah. I think not to. They're, I'm sure there are recipes because it'll go faster. You know what I mean? So yeah. I would totally game, but... I love my Instant Pot. Deb knows. I'm like an Instant oh, yeah. Pot proselytizer. <laughs> Lauren, you were shaking your head yes a minute ago. What soup are you going to lead us in? Uh -huh. <laughs> I know you've got one. What is it? I mean, I have a favorite one, but I don't know if I would lead anyone in it. Listen, it's just us. It's not like a know. It's chicken tortilla, though, so that's your jam. Let's do it together, Lauren. <laughs> That sounds fun. Yeah, let's do it. And for the people who I haven't met yet um, on email, if you could just leave me your email address in the chat, that would be great. And then I just, while everybody's getting all their ingredients in, um, I'm going to remind you, you know, we originally said certain size containers, certain shape, forget all that. Any size containers, any shape. What we want you to do is spread this kindness with wherever you think it could be used best. Uh, wherever nutritious hub will be most appreciated. Could be people in your family, could be people in your neighborhood, might be somebody that you work with that's going through a hard time. And if you have extra and you're, you, know, you don't have an immediate need, there are two shelters listed on the bottom of our event page on the website and one um, consolidation hub, which are the organizations that are feeding the people who, in our county who are most in need due to economic distress and COVID. So the Up County Hub in Germantown is happy to accept your um, donations of food. We're just gonna have to remember to mark them with the date, what kind of soup is in it, your name so that if we have any question they they know who to call and any um food restrictions or allergies and so for this soup it's either going to be vegan or nothing you don't need to say anything else for this soup um and if you could let me know in the chat um if you haven't already told me how you're planning to use your soups and who you're planning on bestowing your kind soups to on 
that would be great. And you can always send me pictures or little stories afterwards because we are going to make this kindemic travel as far and wide as we can. So we'd love to have your stories and your pictures if you have any to share. And I just love kindemic. I just think that's so fun. So fun, yeah. A whole lot better than the demic we've been dealing with, right? Totally. When you're ready, um, the limes go in. This is another favorite tool of mine. It's just a lemon and lime press, like that's all it's for. But I use this a lot. So you can, use it or you can do it however you want. It the seeds out. You're going to put in two limes, and then the last lime is used at the end. You know when it's like done cooking to keep more of a fresh flavor. On my pot, I have much more um, butternut squash than I think I need. And I, how much um, broth should be over and above everything else in my pot right now? Or should it just be kind of at the same level? Loading and not, I'm not done with my sweet potatoes. I'm just going to have a lot of solid to broth ratio. It's definitely a soup, but it's a chunky soup. It's not a. So you know, I don't want two inches of broth over all the solids right now. And it's more like, what do you think feels right? Right? You know, so right now, mine is like. Yeah, can you lift your, your camera up or no? Is that hard? I mean, it's hard to see because it's floating. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? No, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah. It smells so good. Are people liking the way it's smelling so far? Yeah. Uh, Dominique, did you say you use chicken um, stock? I use chicken stock. Um, I use better than bouillon base. Um, their vegetable better than bouillon is unbelievable. Oh, really good, yeah. I think borscht, I might lead a borscht session. And I use their beef broth for that. But their vegetable one is unbelievably good. Dominic, I haven't been able to find it since COVID. I used to get it at Costco all the time. Where are you getting it? At one time, the last time I was there, they only had chicken. But I was there yesterday or the day before and they had vegetable chicken and... Oh. Yeah, I couldn't find the vegetable one either for the longest time. You can order time. it online. Like my that mom. That's a good idea. I should just order it. You all just met another of our upcoming chefs. Carol, will you introduce yourself and tell us what you're going to um, lead us in cooking? Oh, hi. Um, I'm Carol Weil. I um, am involved with the Kindworks book discussion and also... Um, worked a lot with Dominique on the refugee meal program back in the day when the old fashioned day when we did it in person. <laughs> and um, next, um, it's the first Saturday in December and um, Deb, you got, you caught me on the spot. I cannot remember. It's a, on the website. I think it's the fifth, the fifth or the 12th. Isn't that you? I think it is the fifth. Yeah. And it's um, an Indian, um, spice lent, lentil spice soup i think yes. and it, i know it had garam masala in it because i was worried that that might um put some people off but that is actually pretty easy to find and if you can't find it i can tell you how to make it with other stuff you have so perfect yeah. okay i'll come uh, we put in the chickpeas now in the soup um once it's been cooking 10 or 20 minutes and i'm sorry i just missed putting that in the recipe um, because if you're using tinned chickpeas, using, yes, I would wait because you don't want them to get too soft, but you do want to cook for a little while. So I'd say okay. About 10 minutes. Okay. Dominique? Yeah. Hi. For those of us who are, which is probably just me, um, a little bit behind <laughs> and struggling to stay up. Uh, can you review where we are? Like, where, what, where, where should I be? Should everything be in there right now? I'm still putting in my sweet potatoes because okay, I have good. them. Okay, good. What about the squash? The squash I threw in already. So it okay. gets ready and prepared, throw it in. But again, you just cook it till it's cooked. So don't worry about being behind. 
but everything is in now. Pretty much everything is in. Pretty much everything is in. Okay, um, including and then you, and then the broth. You put the broth in and bring it, bring it to a boil, and then turn it down like a regular soup. Exactly. Like, okay. I've got mine because there's so much. I still have mine on a full gas because you know I want it. You know I don't want it to cool down yet. If it starts roiling, boiling, I will turn it down. But it's such a big pot. Yeah. I think the heat. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is the cilantro in yet? No, that's going to go in the very last thing. Okay. So the only two bread. things I have left is um, juice of one lime, cilantro. And, and chickpeas. I forgot to put in the recipe. The chickpeas. Right. Okay. Right. Take the website for people if they go back and look for that. I'm just, it's, I'm not switching back and forth fast enough to go back to the recipe and then come back to everybody. So. What do you want me to tell you? I've got it right here. That's okay. Now she's good. She's like, she's got the right three things left. She's in good shape. Yeah. Well, I have a little bit of an overload on my pot because I did the full thing. So I'm going to have to, uh, I think I'm going to have to heat part of my broth and add it later after I um, mash everything. Get it out later. There's no problem with that. Yeah. My pot, when I put in this last sweet potato, it's going to be full. Uh, Dominique? Yeah. Um, do you put the salt and pepper when you cook the soup or do you add it at the end? I do it at the last. Now, I find that usually the chicken stock is salty enough for me. And then I adjust it to taste. Do you know what I mean? So I would just adjust it to taste. And I don't think there's any harm in putting a little pepper in now. You know, I mean, here we go. But I... Um, Feel free to just taste it and decide what you think it needs. All right, I've got everything in but my chickpeas, and I'm going to go ahead and get those cans open and prepare my cilantro, which I have not done. I love this. I want to share that Lauren is going to, um, I, it sounds like you do Meals on Wheels deliveries and you're going to give some of your soup to the person for whom you deliver your No, I don't meal. deliver to her anymore, but she's my friendly, friendly caller. Remember they instituted yes. the caller yeah. program. So I, we talk to each other every week, you know, since like April. Yeah. So she's housebound, but I could still bring her some. Oh, I think she'd like that. <laughs> I'm sure she will. Lauren, what is a friendly caller? Um, when Meals on Wheels, when COVID happened, they realized that the seniors, the housebound seniors weren't going to be able to get out. So they were missing the social socialization. So they asked some of us um, through the program to be matched up with one of those seniors and to call them once a week and just have a conversation for half an hour, 45 minutes. So they have that. Yeah, it's nice. How is she? She's good. She's about 70. She was on my route. She has a lot of health issues. She doesn't leave the house except for a doctor's appointment. So she really looks forward to the calls. And she has a lot of fun stories and when she works and travels. So you know, she's just like very upbeat, you know, very Christian, sort of upbeat, positive attitude person. So that's so nice. Well, I realized as I was putting stuff away that I forgot to put my ginger in when I was frying the onions. So I just threw it in. Megan, are you busy? Can you tell us what a Yemenite soup is? Mm -hmm. um, sure, it's... Uh... Sweet potatoes, zucchini, uh, it's actually very similar to this. Sweet potatoes, zucchini, carrots, um, chickpeas, uh, I throw in rotisserie chicken, 
um, a, a few tomatoes. Um, it's got many of the same flavors as this. So it's, you know, cumin, coriander, um, cilantro, a lot of cilantro. It's actually kind of like this with more vegetables and not blended. Yeah, okay. sounds good. Yeah, you serve it on top of couscous and you make the couscous out of the soup part of it, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. sounds good. So for everybody else on the call while you're cooking, Megan just joined our digital empowerment team. And so if you've got <laughs> computers that aren't being used and maybe they need to be cleaned off and refurbished a little bit, that's her specialty. We've got a team of about four or five people now who are working on that. And what we do with them once we get them is give to students and ESOL families and uh, the Gandhi Youth Brigade, um, Brigade, wherever we find need, refugee families, wherever we find people who are not connected during this time when everyone needs to be connected, that's where they're going and they go free. Um, the volunteers all refurbish for free. It's just moving stuff from where it's not being used to where it can be used. So reach out if you have any components for computers, desktop, laptops, tablets, yeah, I just got a delivery, like right before we started cooking, someone dropped a whole bunch of equipment on my front porch. So uh, fabulous. My only challenge is, is that, you know, I know enough just to be dangerous, and, you know, like playing with computers. So we'll have to see when you talk about, you know, strip rating operating systems and rebuilding them. And yeah. I'm trying. That's great. Thank you for doing that. Sure. And um, what I chopped they... my cilantro stems and all, but I just chopped the stems finely but they add really nice flavor and they add texture. I do not puree the whole soup. New Covent Garden does. I like it chunky. I puree just enough to thicken the broth. We're not there yet. I'm just mentioning it since people might be prepping their cilantro. Wait, so I forgot. Was, um, the juice of the limes, was that supposed to go in already? Two of the three lime juices. Keep the last one for the end because it's fresher. You know, we'll add that last very fresh vinegary. Okay. So two are going to be cooking in and one we're going to add it right at the end. Can you show um, how fine your cilantro is when you get done in the sure. camera? All right. Oh, thanks. Can you see that? The leaves are chopped, but it's the stems that I just try to pretty pretty fine okay, whoops can you see that yes thank you yeah I need cilantro i hope that works is this too big to call for i'll just flip it longer it's like a top winding oh i can't hear you you're on mute. Sorry about that. I accidentally muted, I guess, while I was showing my cilantro. Okay. Um, that's fine, Salma. You just need to cook it till it's cooked, right? So the size is more, if you're not going to puree what you like and how fast it cooks. Okay. So I'm just prepping my chickpeas now. I'm draining them. So, can I ask a question? So I'm way behind. I've got my whole onion batch ready and I've got my stock in a separate thing. Is it time to just add all my onion stuff into the stock? You cooked your onions with the spices and everything? Yeah, add it right into the stock. Sure. And then add the butternut squash and exactly. the potato. Right away as soon as you've got it in. I used a cup of stock to deglaze the pan so I didn't lose any of the good juices. Good idea. Okay. Okay. Dominique, that ends in the bottom of my pot that I'm going to put the soup in so that it just all ends up cooking in the same pot. That's how I usually do it. I was just needing to prepare my boot better than beer rum, so that's why I had them separate. But I normally do it the way you did it. So is there a reason when you have better than bullion, normally I just like pour the water in a pot and then, you know, slap in my, you know, tablespoon of whatever bullion. Is there a reason to do it separately? No, you can do that. Okay. I did that once late and then there were chunks of the better than beer rum floating around and I had it some late in the process and like my husband got a mouthful of it and he was like, ugh. <laughs> so then I thought, oh, I'll just make it separately today. How much of this goes into like <laughs> for eight ounces? So we're doing about 12 cups, three liters. So uh, it's like... So look, mine is boiling and kind of frothing.
thing a little bit. So I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Oh, Dominique. Yeah. I didn't use the bouillon. I used a the boxed. Yeah. But I used I put a whole box in there, 32 ounces, which is more than it called for. But mine looks about like yours, liquid wise. Is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. But I shouldn't add any more. I that's that's I shouldn't put a second box or any more as long as it's not. It doesn't need to be covered all the way. The box is four cups, and I tripled this, so it should be three boxes. But yeah, oh, I, I used I four. Said, I thought it said thirteen. I I, was, I guess I misread that. Um, We're using thirty-two ounce containers approximately to send to the shelter. Maybe that was. No, I was looking at, on the recipe, it said four liters, right? Yeah. And so I Googled, how many ounces is four liters? And it said 13. No, I Googled no. it too. It said Did I read that wrong? Nine. No, it's 32 ounces. 32 ounces, approximately. So that's perfect. Then I put the right amount in. One box is 32 no. ounces. No, Three boxes. Three boxes. Okay. So I, oh gosh, how am I going to fit that a in? A liter is about four cups. A liter is like a uh four cups one right. approximately four cups yeah uh okay. why do you use better bouillon better than bouillon instead of the chicken stock in boxes is it a, a it question because i was using a lot and the better than beer like i just i have about four or five boxes of stock but i use it a lot mm -hmm. in small amounts and since to me it was just easier there's no <laughs> difference taste wise it's just okay. I That's use the... white stock when I'm using the wet. I use you know it's just a kitchen management thing for me okay okay and in fact when I make it for my family I usually use the boxes but I'm making more this time so thank you you're welcome about, well, tell us about the, the frothing then that means is it about to boil to the point that you need to turn it down? I turned mine down now because it was really starting to froth a lot, meaning it's pretty hot. Okay. And I'm going to get a fork and start to see how the is getting. My squash is almost ready, but because I was adding my sweet potatoes as I cut them, I probably have another 10 minutes. And once we're getting to six o'clock, I think we'll be just about done. But if don't sweat it, I'm just going to show you how I do it. You cook as long as you need to. Um, but taste the broth once it's been boiling for a little bit because you're going to start to get a sense of what this tastes like. And I'm actually not doing it that way, which I normally did. I almost did it. I'm putting it in something to drink just because we're giving this to someone else. Did you already um, add salt and pepper? Is your microplane in a, the dishwasher or do you wash it by hand? No, I throw it in the dishwasher. You do? Okay. That's For good. Years and it's in perfect condition. So I put in, I just grated some pepper. I have not added salt because I think the better the beer bouillon has a good amount of salt in it. So I would only salt if you need it. I'm not gonna salt mine. Well, and the beans have salt too. The chickpeas have salt. Right. I think it's time to add the chickpeas um, because it's been cooking for a while. So, if you have not been cooking for a while, wait a little to add the chickpeas. And I just drain them. I don't even rinse them. I have not an inch of room left. Look at that pot. I put three in. You could put four if you really like chickpeas, but I just think it's kind of a nice balance. It's more vegetable with like a chickpea in every bite kind of thing. 
my pot is also so cold. No, I was just saying the same thing. I don't know how many get chickpeas in there. It's like at the very top about the boil yeah, over. I think you want to get another soup pot and move half of it over, unfortunately. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. Yeah. Dominique, mine is very limey. Is that, is that what it's supposed to be? It tastes lime, but it's not I, very limey. So oh, this, I'm not going to use it yet, but this is an immersion blender, and I was at a friend's house who is um, from Bangladesh, and she was making stuff, and she was like, this is the best kitchen. Like, I have so many, this is the best kitchen. You do. so nice, because have you ever, like, tried to puree either a soup or puree, like, a little bit of beans, and you put it in the pot, and it's like a mess, and then you have to clean your plate. So I don't so I know like it's a one trick but it's a really good trick. You know, you can use it for for beans to thicken them a little bit. You can use it for soups to puree all the way. So if you don't have one and you make a lot of soup, think about it. You it's just I just put it in here, I'm not ready to yet. And I just put it in for like five seconds and then I check it. All I want to do is thicken this so it's not a liquid broth. I want it to be, have a little bit more mouth feel, to have a little bit more sustenance, especially for the For it, I don't. I like, I like it. Hey, on the chickpeas, are we drinking them or not? Let's go. There's some crazy noise. Are we draining the chickpeas? Yes, drain them, but you don't need to rinse. If somebody's got some people talking in the back, can they just mute themselves for a minute? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my sweet potatoes are still hard because I was running behind with those. My butternut squash is really nice and cooked. So, you know, planning. Probably the sweet potatoes having those prepped is more important. <laughs> Which Does I didn't. Does it matter? Will it get too mushy? I don't know. Because, you know, it's a soup. It's like we can't overcook it, right? Not really. Dominique, when you get um, a bunch of cilantro, do you wash it first? Yes. Okay, so I always do, but I always wonder if everybody else does. It, it never really dries, you know, and so it's always like it doesn't keep as long because it's a wet and moist. Right before I use it, you know. Oh, you oh you only use you only wash what you're using at the time. You keep the rest of it in the bunch. Okay. And some people, I find that Trader Joe's cilantro like keeps really well, much better than like Giant. Like it's something in the bag. Um, but um, some people will take like the Giant cilantro and trim off the bottom of it with water and then cover it with plastic roll and put it in the fridge. And it's supposed to last a lot longer that way. My fridge is always stuffed to the gills, so I'm worried it'll spill, so I don't do that. I forgot to pick up cilantro, and I had extra cilantro that I'd stuck in the freezer last time I had it. And so we're gonna have to see how this works because it'll add a nice flavor. Do you know what I mean? And then if we have some, some left over and you go to the store tomorrow, I'll try it with the cilantro. It's really nice and fresh. But I'm sure it'll be good. This looks really good. We don't even have the cilantro. In it. Yeah. Also, if you have extra cilantro and you cut it up and put it in ice cubes, and then you could take it out a cube at a time. So yeah. you put it in with water and freeze it? Um, not even, um, yeah, I don't think that you, with water, just yeah. chop it up and it's a little moist itself and just oh, freeze okay. it. And so each cube you could take out separately. That's a great idea. Nice. That's what I, that's. That's what I do with my leftover broth when I ha open a whole box and I only need half. So smart. And I, I make uh, broth cubes and put them in a fr freezer bag so that if, and, and spaghetti sauce, because I'm only cooking for two now. And yeah. 
So I do the same thing with my sp canned spaghetti sauce. I'm in jars. Tomatoes almost ready now. So just because we're getting to the end of the hour, I'm just going to show you my wonderful immersion blender that I love. <laughs> um, so do not start it until it's in, until it's immersed, or you will make a mess. Okay, so put it in, and then I just go like this. I wish I can't hold both, but I'm just going down to the bottom where I can feel, you know, that it's hitting stuff. And then I'm gonna stop. You can see it's got little pieces. And I'm just gonna kind of see, like, is that thickening it a little? I want it a little thicker. And you know, you can just go all day till it's all done if you want it all done. I just want it a little thicker and I'm gonna show it to you. That's a whole lot easier to clean up than me having to try and put it in this uh, food processor. Yeah, exactly. And actually, uh, <laughs> obviously the base, you can't do anything, but this comes off, that's the base. This can go in the dishwasher. Oh, nice. So it's, it's really nice. So, uh, let me show it to you. So you can see, instead of it being a clear broth, now it's very orange, okay? And it's thicker. It's not thick. When you cool it in the fridge overnight, it will thicken, okay? But it's from the potato. But now you can see, instead of very brothy, and you can do more if you want, but you can see, I like it still with with whole chickpeas and onions and stuff. So then I'm gonna squeeze in my last lime. And Deb, if yours is feeling too acidic and limey, don't, you know? Right. To me, this is what I like about this soup. And then I'm gonna stir in the cilantro. which not only adds color, but the lime and the cilantro to me add this really nice summer freshness to what's really a winter root soup. And I really like that. And then the cilantro kind of um, gets into the broth and gives that nice lift. So here is what it's gonna look like. And then I'm just gonna taste it. Now I'm stirring it all around to get the fresh lime juice mixed in. And I'm just gonna put a little bit in this cup and taste it. And it's a flavor, if you taste it, once you put everything in, there's like the forward flavor and then it keeps changing like you're you know, it's like a, as it goes across your tongue. That's what I love about this soup. Sounds great. I don't think particularly, I'm not salting mine at all. My husband doesn't like a lot of salt. I usually salt everything after I put it in my bowl. I'm putting a little more pepper in and it's done, you know, so. Amazing. One, one helpful hint for next time, Katie's mentioning um, that, you know, we'll put in the recipe from now on or things to do in advance, you know, pull out the stock pot that um, is, is of adequate size. We had a lot of people that didn't have enough room today. So we'll mention that in the future. We're always going to cook a nice, big, huge pot of soup together so that everybody has plenty to share. Um, what else? What else did we learn today to do better next time? I think it was Probably the chopping well, ahead of time. Yeah, yeah, do whatever, whatever the, the prep work. Like whatever the, the prep work is. Like yeah. I did chop my veggies and, mm -hmm. and do my limes and my onions, but wow. um but um well I didn't know how much was meant by prep what you can ahead. So <laughs> well, like if we kind of had specific ones, I think it would help. Okay, and then also I think it helps with potatoes. <laughs> 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 
She'll be cooking by next Saturday. She'll finish up the soup. It'll just be ready. So, and then the other thing is, I think it would be helpful for most, some people really would have been helped by having the um, recipe printed out and next to them, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. so we'll I recommend that. Yes. Okay, great. And this I never normally do, but because I wanted to be able to chat and not be messy, making a mess. That's I so smart. Cabinet, which, which was actually really helpful to be able to just kind of glance up. Yeah. So and next time I do it, I'll try to put the whole recipe in there and not forget. <laughs> Detail. There are some people who like don't share the right recipe when they share it, Dominique. So they're always the best cook. I don't know. <laughs> Can I ask some questions about the recipe? Sure. Yes. Okay, so I've gotten to the point. I, I, there's no way I can cook and do this and, and Zoom at the same time. It's just impossible. Um, but my, I have two questions. One is, and probably people have already asked, I don't see where it says anything about putting in the chickpeas or the cilantro. What's the deal? <laughs> I just forgot. And when do the chickpeas says stir in cilantro off the heat? And Afterwards, that I thought that, but what about those chickpeas? I totally forgot. And when I was typing the recipe out for Deb, because I had to copy it out of my cookbook, uh -huh. not available online, I just forgot. And I'm sorry because so, somebody. So when did they go I, in? I, I said, when did we put in the chickpeas? <laughs> so. Excuse you put me. Them in, you let your sweet potatoes and. Um, butternut squash cubes cook for a bit, get them started. And yes. once they're like halfway done, then go ahead and throw your chickpeas in. It's yeah. remarkable that without any kind of training this way, I still figured out that that's what I had to do. Okay, the chickpeas are draining. Thank you so much. Well, Margie, we don't know you. Tell us who you are. Deb, you do know me. And oh, I you came you back. Have. I did you. <laughs> Wait, uh, it's Marjorie Klein. I can give you a full name if you want. See, no, that's, that's true. Nice to know you. Nice to Klein. nice to see your camera picture. I don't understand why that didn't come up. That's I don't know either. Odd. I don't I know either. Do you start video on the bottom left? I did start the video. Oh well. It says, "Let me stop it and start it again." Now I've stopped it. Yeah. Restart it. Start video. Yes. Nada. Come on. Your, your default camera may not be the camera that you're really using. That's oh, that is the camera. Look at all the hair I have. Isn't that amazing? Marjorie, I haven't seen you since last summer when we collected for the children at the border, right? Yes, that's it's when. Good to see you. Oh, God, it's good to see you too. So that's who I am. We are 19 people, so, you know, I How keep thinking it's a lot of soup. <laughs> you know, there are many things we've lost during the pandemic, but we could never fit 19 people into somebody's kitchen together. <laughs> That's right. So this is one of the silver linings, as I call them, you know? Absolutely. We can all be cooking. So before we, we all go, if anybody is going up to either um, Oak Chapel or actually Black Rock, I know that Black Rock, if you happen to have extra shampoo or detergents or feminine hygiene products, they're, they're running low on some of those things and feel free to bring anything else you want to donate in addition to the soup. Well, actually, you know what else that you guys probably are so frustrated at recycling that they could use any, you know, good quality paper bags, like the kind that, the, you know, your deliveries, your groceries might get delivered in, paper bags and boxes. So if you've got a garage full of boxes and paper bags that you are miserable, that you don't know what to do with, bring them up to BlackRock. You will make them so happy. Someone well, asked if we were unpacking stuff. Lots of the boxes are going to the recycling. Yeah, no, don't um, don't recycle them. You bring them where they can be reused. It's the higher good from recycling, right? Yep. Oh, what were you going to say, Julie? Were you? Oh, I was going to. Uh, you know, I did cook with you guys one time a long time ago. I recognized Dominique when Potomac did the refugee project, yeah. and so I just wanted to try this out. It seemed like such a great idea, and I can do it, and it's safe. And I haven't done a cooking project since then. So um, I'm glad to be with you. And I was going to say, I am going to Black Rock. So somebody asked, Cheryl, you asked for somebody to go to Black Rock? Where do you live? I, feel like you could take I live in Cabin John. I can coordinate with you. Um, it's a lot of soup. I, I put my contact information in the chat. Okay. 
I'll, I'll copy it down before we and go off. The chat. Yeah, if anybody's going and is willing to drive other people's soups, put your name and what city you live in and your email in the chat, and then you can connect with each other to, uh, to take it up. And that way, you know, it's less contact for each person. And, you know, it's nice. Not everybody can do that. So has anybody tasted their soup? What are you thinking? Love it. Good. Delicious. Yeah. Also, anybody good. I needed to add salt to mine, but it's good. good. Mine, um, my sweet potato chunks were too big, so I'm still cooking. Okay. <laughs> well, I wondered about that as well, about the, the size of the, you know, it says a one inch cube is huge. So yeah. that's because yeah. they are going to puree the whole thing. Do you know uh, what I mean? Like the, the New Covent Garden purees all their soups almost. <laughs> puree i don't know if it's a british thing or what mm. but um i prefer mine chunky and so i try to make it what i think is you know good bite you know if you're gonna have a couple of chunks of different stuff also um everyone if, if there's somebody nearby who can take a picture of you with your soup as you're cooking just uh, a not a post picture it would be great to collect uh collect it and we'll put put something together on the heart. And I had Julia do it, so I'll send you one. Great. Mm -hmm. And anyone else who wants to do a selfie or, or have a picture taken, please send them to Deb. Send them to Deb? Okay. Thank you. You have another pictures of me, Deb. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do, but this is a long-haired picture of you. It's beautiful. Oh my God, isn't it amazing? It is <laughs> great. So we're all new to this project. Who's new to Kind Works? Is there anybody here new? Hi. How did you connect, Kelly? Kelly? I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses on. Is That's that okay. Kelly, yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, through the listserv, the neighborhood listserv. Oh, great. Yeah, I make, I like to do community service and I like to make soup and I like to cook. And I thought this is such a great idea. I, I applaud you, whoever came up with this idea. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Um, and you know, the fact that we can eat and we can share some of it with other people, like it's a win-win. Yeah. And get new recipes and you know, what else do we have to do right now, right? Except do something good for <laughs> we're all home. So Kelly, we're so glad you're here. Thank and you. if you feel like sharing one of your recipes with us, we would be honored and thrilled. Okay. Okay. When yeah. I get my when I get a little more familiar, I was like definitely in the weeds tonight. I was not or organized enough, but I will well, be better next time. No, no, no. Let me assure every single person on this call, Dominique is like a master chef. She can cook a core uh, like for 20 people in an hour, where the rest of us are just kind of pouring the wine and like getting ready. Where's, where's the right size measuring cup? And she's done. She's amazing. But we're all amazing. We're all here. We're all making soup. You do not have to be as fast as she is to lead us. We can take a different pace. But the Push for the, the sweet potatoes. You got to wrestle with the, you know, the, the, the butternut squash and the sweet potatoes are both things that you have to kind of wrestle with. So, you know, honestly, I normally buy them pre-chopped. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so, I mean, literally you throw this together in 20 minutes, yeah. simmer. It's so, so much I mean, easier. I was, I thought I've got a whole bag of sweet potatoes. I should use some of them. I don't need them all for Thanksgiving. And I'm sitting there like peeling them going, why did I do this? Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> I know, I know. I mean, but, I, started, um, I started working at 3.30 and I just, I mean, oh, in about a minute really? I'm gonna go up and add my chickpeas yeah. because it took that long to do the butternut squash. Yeah. It's just a very long Yeah, process. I literally have to arm wrestle the stuff to get it. Right, and I don't know if anyone else has this, but I have that allergy where I react. Oh, I don't have allergies. I have all these skin things. And my skin reacts to the um, squash. So that normally when I work yeah. with squash, mm -hmm. I, wear, I wear gloves. Because mm -hmm. how often do you work with butternut squash? I don't do it very often. Anyway, I didn't do it today because I didn't think I was working with enough. I was wrong. Yeah, it's totally worth buying pre-done. Yeah. Ugh. You live and learn. Right, except that my problem was is that my squash, I had all these butternut squash that grew in my backyard. I didn't oh, find so you wanted to use them. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't plant them. That's a good use. Grow. Perfect recipe for that. Yeah, it is. Okay, I'm going upstairs to do my chickpeas. I may be back.
<laughs> well, we're actually, I think we're going to let everybody go, even though it's kind of sad for me because we all are seem to be having a good time together. But your family's expected you a back off the Zoom a little after six. So should we all go, but know that we're going to be in our hearts cooking the rest of this together and let us know how it goes. Share any story yeah. that you have. Tell us what's what happened with the soup that you shared, and then did your family like it. Yeah. If you gave it to someone you know, what did they think? I, I, I'll I, take the recipe for the missing chickpeas. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. So, <laughs> do you do the immersion? I'm way behind still. Oh, okay. Do we do the immersion before the chickpeas or after? After. After. So the chickpeas can get it's part the, of the. Room. It's the last thing before the the cilantro and the wine going back in. The last line, the one line that you held back. That's when I do the immersion blender. Yep. Okay. And this thing works. Can I just add before we all leave um, that we are, you know, as I think many of you know, we're launching this uh, kindemic, a pandemic of kindness. We're starting um, Monday, the week of Thanksgiving. We're going to go all the way to the end of 2020. Every day, we're going to make a suggestion of a, a kind thing that we can each do. Uh, sometimes tied to our Kind Works projects, but always adaptable so that anybody in any community, in any city, in any country around the world can do it. We're hoping to make kindness contagious, uh, make, make, make the kindemic go viral too. So uh, tune in. Are you doing Facebook posts with it and stuff? So we could just keep sharing and that kind of thing? We'll post it on uh, KindWorks Facebook page. Uh, so tune in and share in the comments. Great. And share our posts as widely as possible. We really want to uh, make this spread. We'll be looking forward to it, Salma. Thank you for doing that. Yes, absolutely. Can I add something too? I have something, it's sort of unrelated to this, but it's related to cooking, since you all seem to like to cook or we wouldn't all be here, right? Um, <laughs> I, I just uh, found out a little while ago that the Barefoot Contessa is doing a Thanksgiving show tomorrow at noon on the Food Network, and she's making, she's having guest, celebrity, guest chefs, and they're going to be making their favorite, like, side dishes and things. So if anybody's sounds interested fun. in tuning into that, I think it sounds great, like, great fun. I'm definitely going to tune into it, so i would let you all know Thanks that. for the tip. I want to say something to Dominique. Yeah. Um, Dominique, I made the soup earlier this week and my family loved it oh, okay. it, was, it was very very special everybody loved it i don't uh, i do puree all my soup and mostly the butternut squash soup because i love the texture yeah. of the velvetness of the soup mm -hmm. i think it's really worth the trouble to puree completely okay. and i i just prepared everything so i saw all the little things that were not explain correctly on the recipe oh, so, and I'm planning to to try the soups before the meeting right. so if you want I can send you my feedback if I see well, something. I love you too. They would have been nice to catch that yes. Absolutely. Okay I, I didn't want to bother but Not I will I will next time. Love it. Okay. Thank you Dominique. Bye. Thank Thank you. You. Thanks Thank so, you much, so much. Yeah, I have a quick question before you hang up. Yes. I, I'm sorry, I didn't join the Zoom. I was just making the soup and now I got out of the website and the recipe is no longer on the website anymore. Ooh. I think it disappeared after the Zoom ended and I can't finish my soup because I don't have the rest of the recipe. Um, we're gonna try that again. There's no reason that it would have disappeared off the um, website. Your email in the chat, Deb, and then I will email you the recipe. That would be great. <laughs> Let's see, how do I do that? Oh, I see, the date is gone. Ah, okay, yes. yeah. I can't find the, I can't find the recipe anymore and I'm halfway oh, no. through making it. <laughs> All right. Cameron, what's your, um, what's your oh, email I'm right, it's Rachel A. Fisher at Gmail. Oh, you're not uh, Cameron? Fisher, F-I-S-H-E-R. Yeah, R-A-C-H-E-L-A-F-I-S-H-E-R at Gmail. Okay, give me five minutes, I'll send it to you. Awesome, thank you. Okay. <laughs> hey, we're learning new things. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh no, where'd it go? <laughs> uh, Cheryl? 
Thank you. Carol, Israel Block, I'm not blaming you, but I'm asking. What? What did she I do wrong? She said that the recipe is gone from the website. Uh oh. Okay. It's it's so off the website once the day. Recipe for, wheat, for my soup? No. So no, it's the event is gone for today, and so now the recipe's gone because that it's is so bizarre. Because I never, I mean, it's 614. So crazy. I can <laughs> jump off so I can get Rachel the recipe. I had printed it out before the Zoom, so I have it. No, no. I can actually <laughs> off. Do you want me to do that? No, no. We're all going to hang up, and Dominique's going to email her, but thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. And we'll see you Bye. next Saturday. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.